Shalom. We the real Hebrews always coming to you week in, week out, prophesying the truth and the return of the Heavenly Father, which is prophecy found in the Holy Scriptures. Well, I begin this lesson, I want to give all praises, glory, and honor to Yahweh, Baha Shem, Yahweh Shai, which is the Heavenly Father name and the Son name and the pure language, the pure tongue, according to Zephaniah 3 and 9. The holy tongue. Yahweh is the Heavenly Father name. Yahweh is the Son name. Baha Shah means in the name. I want to give double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone, the holy apostles, the holy prophets, the holy men of the Lord, back to them in the reincarnation with the Holy Spirit, the Baha Racha Kodash, that is the uh, Holy Spirit in the Hebrew, in the Hebrew tongue, Baha and the Racha Spirit Kodash Holy. Because through the Holy Spirit, we're able to understand these prophecies. We're able to understand these parables and mysteries of the scriptures. We're able to worship the Father in spirit, truth, sincerity, and charity with fear, with faith, and with works. And that's the real, that's the you know, quick lesson I want to go into, man. Because this message is not for everybody. This walk of faith, this truth, the understanding, it's not for everybody. Here it is, it's not even for all, it's not for all nations. Salvation is not for all nations. Okay. And the understanding of these scriptures alone is not for all Israel. Because the scriptures tell you all Israel is not Israel. Two thirds half the down this side. They're counted as heathens. They're rebellious. And they just won't get it. Why? Because they're lost, man. They don't want to turn from their ways. They don't want to serve the Lord. They think there's a better way. They lean on their own understanding. And that's the theme of the lesson I want to go into through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashem Al Shah through the Holy Spirit. This Proverbs 1 and 7. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. So to fear the Lord, that's how you increase. That's the beginning of knowledge. That's the first step to being accepted of Him. Okay, and the scriptures tell you that. Fear driveth the way sin. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. So you're a fool if you despise the wisdom how to live, the instructions how to live, moral improvement, correction. Reproof, the way of life. That you a fool if you despise that man. You a fool if you think there's a better way than what God intended it to be. Okay. Jumping down, verse twenty three. Turn you at my reproof. What's reproof? Correction, rebuke, punishment, chastisement, reproof. Okay. And it's correction for what? That the man of God. Can be perfect, man. Thoroughly furnished unto all good works. The scripture say that Second Timothy, all scripture is given by inspiration of God, man. This is not a white man's book. This is the Lord, the Creator Himself, looked down upon His creation. Okay, and He gave them a way of life to live. He set Israel above all nations, man. And we supposed to govern ourselves and behave ourselves according to the scriptures, man, and rule the world. The earth in that way that the Lord intended to be. But it's not like that. Why? Because, again, the wicked think there's another way. There's a better way. And we see their way don't work. All nations had a chance to rule. Look what happened. Their way don't work. The way of the Heavenly Father worked. But, again, everybody don't know and understand this. Because this is not for everybody to know, man. The mysteries, the parables... It's not for everybody to know. It says, Behold, I will pour my spirit unto you. I will make known my words unto you. So the Lord is going to make his words known unto what? The holy men, the elect back in the reincarnation, man. Just as he did in the times of old. This is Matthew 13 and 13. Therefore speak I to them in parables. So the Lord speaks to everybody else in parables. And they can't understand that. And you know what a parable is. Okay. It's really uh and uh to sum it up, it's like uh comparison, man. It's metaphorically speaking, symbolically speaking, man. It says because they seeing, see not, and hearing they hear not, neither do they understand. So the Lord's talking about his people, man. And he goes to quote Isaiah six and nine. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which saith, By hearing ye shall hear, and shall not understand. And seeing ye shall see, and shall not perceive. 
For this people's heart is wax gross. Talking about their mind. The Hebrew word for heart is your log, which is your mind. You must go back into the um, what the scripture was uh, written in. And it was written in Hebrew. So you go back into the uh, etymology of words, the origin of words. And that is the uh, proper understanding of the heart. So that is a wax gross and their ears are dull of hearing and their e eyes they have closed. Lest at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and shall understand with their heart and shall be converted and I shall heal them. So some going to be converted, which means to come back to return and worship the true power and live in his ways as he intended it and not the ways of the wicked. And they're going to be healed from their sins. They're going to be forgiven of their sins. But two thirds, they're not going to understand. They're not going to come back into the fold. Get these other scriptures real quick. Proverbs 8 and 9. They are all plain to him that understandeth and right to them that find knowledge. So the words of the Lord is plain to them to understand. The scripture says, blessed is he that readeth. When you go into that word, read it, they may understand, man. Grab it real quick. Because people think, I read the Bible seven times, front and back. I read it since I was a kid. But do you have the proper understanding? Was these words broken down to you the right way? Was these prophecies broken down to you the right way? Do you have the proper teachers to teach you the correct way for free? Not charging. His proverb, I mean, his revelation is one and three. Blessed is he that readeth. And the Greek word for the uh, readeth, it goes to, uh, it means to understand, to recognize, man. So you're blessed if you understand these things as you read. And they that hear the words of this prophecy. What's prophecy? Things that, uh, uh, things that, that happen, uh, things that are stated before they happen, man. Like the Lord prophesied we was going to go into slavery. And it happened. Okay. The prophets prophesied of things. Spoke of things. And guess what? It happened after they spoke of it, man. Why? Because it was the words of the Lord. It was the will of the Lord being fulfilled. Because the Lord thought about all these things. And his word, his will is being played out. Therefore, that's prophecy, man. To say before. It says, and keep those things which are written therein. Because the scripture was written for our learning. For the time is at hand. What's the time at hand? The return of the Heavenly Father, the Son, the second coming, salvation, and destruction of the wicked. Because their way is not right. Their understanding is not right. Because it's not the understanding and counsel and the uh, correction of the scriptures, man. These people go about establishing their own way, man. Therefore, they got to pay for that. This is Isaiah 8. And 13, sanctify the Lord of hosts himself. Who's the Lord of hosts? It's Yahweh, the Heavenly Father, which will we start off by saying our lessons. Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, that is the Heavenly Father name in the name of the Son name and the Holy Spirit. Because a lot of people say Yahweh, a lot of people know Yahweh, a lot of people, well, they don't know. They claim they just have the name of Yahweh, Yahweh Shah, but they deny him and works indeed. But we fight and we try and we pray to follow the Holy Spirit. To be made holy and separate, man. Not just from the world, but for those that have the name and don't do the right accordingly, man. But that is the Lord of hosts, Yahweh. Again, Zephaniah 39, that pure language, that Lashwan Kodash, that holy tongue, that separate tongue. That's how you pronounce the proper characters, man, of the Heavenly Father, whether it be in the Syrian, in the Assyrian script, or in the Paleo, the ancient script, which our Lord and Savior spoke when you read Acts 26. He spoke Hebrew. And it is Yahweh. It ain't Jehovah. It ain't Yehovah. It ain't Yahweh. Because ain't no E's, no O's, no U's, no J's, no V's in the pure language, man. And that's what it, the name he gave Moses, and his name is a memorial forever and to all generations, man. And he's gonna sing, he's gonna uh glorify his name in the name of his son, man. Again, here on earth, as he did in the time of Exodus, man. When you read about him destroying Pharaoh and his army, man, delivering us out of Egypt. Because we're gonna be delivered again, man. And these people are gonna know. 
So right now, what we must do, sanctify Yahweh of hosts himself and let him be your fear and let him be your dread. We read Proverbs 1 and 7. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. You have to fear him to be accepted of him, man, because it takes fear not to commit adultery willingly. It takes fear not to eat pork willingly. It takes fear not to get liners and line your beard up willingly. It takes fear not to get tattoos and eat abominable foods. It takes fear not to worship idols, man, and do wickedness, abominations. Okay? And it takes faith to know that hey, we have the proper name. We have the we have the right way to walk in, man. And he shall be for a sanctuary to the elect, but for a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense to both the houses of Israel, for a gin and for a snare to the inhabitants of Jerusalem. And that's talking about two thirds. Why? Because they're not gonna understand. They don't have the proper understanding. We just read the precepts. Through the precepts, we get understanding, man. That's why the Lord speaks to them in parables. That's why their hearts is fat and ears are dull and they don't have the understanding. Their eyes are darkened, man. It says, many among them shall stumble and fall and be broken and be snared and be taken. They're not going to get it, man. Some in this truth and this walk of faith and this word or this Bible is going to make them stumble and fall away. It's going to make them be broken and snared and be taken. Because that's prophecy. It must happen. It says, bind up the testimony, seal the law among my disciples. And that's the point. The testimony is sealed among his disciples, man. His disciples are back. His men are back declaring the testimony, declaring the law, statutes, and commandments, showing you the way, rehearsing the righteous acts. It's Isaiah 20, to the law and to the testimony. If they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. So they're not speaking according to this word. Ain't no light in them. They don't have the truth. They're not walking in the ways of the Lord. It's Isaiah 28 and 10. For precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. That's how you teach. That's how you get the people to understand. That's how you cause understanding to be given. That's sound doctrine. For with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to his people. And stammering means mocking. And another tongue is what we speaking today. English, Spanish, you know, and whatever else language our people out there speaking, man. Because you got Israelites scattered amongst all nations, speaking their languages, looking like them, worshiping their gods, taking out their customs. But when the Lord wake us up and put us back into remembrance and make these words known, make his words known unto us again. Pour out his spirit, the Holy Spirit, the Baha Rahak Wadash. We're gonna come out of that madness as a whole, man. We're gonna be delivered. And the end is gonna come. That's why this message is not for everybody, man. It says, To whom he said, This is the rest wherewith ye may cause the weary to rest, and this is the refreshing. Yet they would not hear. That's the two thirds. They won't hear. But the word of the Lord was a, to them precept upon precept. Upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little, that they might go and fall backward and be broken and snared and taken. So the truth is clear. It's plain to them to understand, but these people can't get it. No matter how many precepts you bring out. Why? Because it's not given unto them to know. You have what Shah said in Matthew 13, 13. It ain't given unto all Israel, man. Scripture tell you he came unto his own, his own received him not. I'm going to grab that real quick. They gave him up. They said they ain't got no ruler but Caesar. They wanted a murderer to be released instead of the heavenly father's son, man. The Pharisees and Sadducees, the wicked sect of them, they knew the prophecies and they knew the son, but they was worrying about a position and status in society. That they didn't want to get that up. That they wanted to put our Lord and Savior to death. They didn't want correction and reproof. They was cut to the heart wickedly. They wanted to put him to death. Right along with the prophets, man. And it's John 1 and 11. This goes into the word being made flesh. And the word is Yahweh Shai. It says, 
he was in the world and the world was made by him and the world knew him not. That's talking about the world of Israel, man. Okay? Because when you go into that, it goes into it, man. Cosmos. Cosmos. It is an orderly arrangement, man. An aggregate of things. Who is that? The elect. The world of Israel, man. Okay? But in the world of Israel, two-thirds ain't going to get it. it. says he came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him to them gave he power to become the sons of God. So we are the sons of God. That's why we're called Yasharala. Israel is just a term and a name that you can understand in English. But we are Yasharala, man. We are the uh, prince of power, man. Even to them that believe on his name. And his name is Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, man. And I'm going to end it with this. This is 2 Corinthians 4 and 3. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. In whom the God of this world have blinded the minds of them which believe not. So the God of this world, the wicked, Job 9 and 24, tell you the earth is given into the hands of the wicked. He covered the face of the judges. If not, where, who is he? This is scriptural. Who is the wicked? Malachi 1 tells you who's the wicked. Esau, Edom, the border of wickedness. Who's Esau, Edom? Jacob, evil twin brother that came out first red all over. Who's red? Who's wicked? Who's known for wickedness and murder? The so-called Caucasians today that rule the world. That want to be every other nation but who they is, man. A fugitive and a vagabond. Who sold his birthright for a uh, uh, morsel of meat. Okay? Who still spirit bear witness. He is Esau Edom that love his uh, meat with blood still in it, man. That crafty hunter, man. Man of the field. Look at Bear Grylls, for example. Look at the so-called elites, man. How they eat their steak. How they conduct themselves. The biggest pedophiles. The biggest murderers. The biggest liars, man. It says, In whom the God of this world, Esau, Edom, have blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Hamashiach, and the Hamashiach is the Hebrew word for the Messiah, because Christ is an idol, Jesus Christ is an idol, Yahweh is an idol, Jehovah is an idol, Yahuwah is an idol, man, Yeshua is an idol, Yeshua is an idol, and I'm only stating these things for edification's sake, these are idols, man, it says, who is the image of God should shine unto them, so that their, their minds are blinded, man. They don't want to receive this light. They don't want to walk in the way. You have a shot came, told him I'm the way to walk in. Okay, he was he was set. Okay. <laughs> For repentance unto all Israel, but guess what? Only the elect accepted it. Two thirds rejected it. Therefore, they're going to be rejected and die death by pain. That's doctrine. That's scripture. That's in him, man. The scriptures tell you that. Because I have called and ye refused. I have stretched out my hand and no man regarded, but ye have set at naught all my counsel and with none of my reproof. I will also laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh. When your fear cometh as desolation and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind. When distress and anguish cometh upon you, then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. Then shall they seek me early, but they shall not find me. For they hated knowledge and did not, did not choose the fear of the Lord. They were none of my counsels. They despised all my reproof. Therefore shall they eat of the fruit of their own way and be filled with their own devices. And that's talking about the two thirds, man. And this happened back then. And it's going to happen in the time of Jacob's trouble, a day like no other. And it's going to happen here in America, man, pretty soon on a mass scale. And verse 33 tells you, but whoso hearken unto me shall dwell safely and shall be quiet from the fear of evil. The Lord said his servants are going to eat. We're going to be in lead with the stones in the field, man. The beast of the field. Sure says when the enemy come in like a flood, he's going to lift up a standard. It says in six trouble, he shall deliver you. Okay? So, hey, man. Lord will, hopefully, less was that a fine. It ain't given to everybody to know this. But if we endure and fight and pray for the understanding, 
the Lord's going to give the understanding. If we continue to have faith and works, man, according to our lot, according to our ability, the Lord is going to reward us and keep us evil, uh, keep us safe in a time of evil that's going to come upon this place, man. But if you uh, disagree, if you hearken, if you disagree and you don't hearken, man, and you think it's a joke, and you put off day to day, and you seek to find your uh, life, man, which you, you're not going to find it, you're really losing it. You're going to die. You're in for a rude awakening, man. Well, we lost our life and we found it for Yahweh Shah's sake. Okay? You have to carry your cross, bear your burden, and convert and come back, man. That's the message. If you if you can't get that, man, you're going to die death by pain. Read Ezekiel 9 and 4. Scripture says, slay utterly old and young. Both maid and little children. Bring them hither and slay them before me. Those that would not have the Lord reign over him, man. Bring them hither and slay them before me, man. That's what the Lord got in store for the hard head uh, of our people, man. That's judgment, man. So, hey, and the prophets bring you to the judgment. Shalom.